There's a popular saying that what a man can do, a woman can do better. But does that saying also apply to running a cartel or narcotics empire? Well, at the end of this video, I want you to tell me if it does, because we'll be going through the top five most dangerous female cartel bosses in history. No matter what you do, do not underestimate these women, because some of them were just as dangerous as Pablo Escobar. And I mean that literally. Now, let's begin. Number five is Angie Saclamente Valencia. Never in my life did I think I'd see someone so smoking hot, yet so freaking dangerous. Angie Saclamente Valencia is a former Colombian beauty queen and lingerie model, who was also the ringleader of one of the world's largest drug syndicates. You can call her the Cleopatra of cocaine, because she knew how to use her beauty to sway men, especially policemen, away from her drug trafficking schemes. Born in Colombia, Valencia entered the drug scene after winning a beauty pageant in early 2000. She then formed her own cartel with a bunch of ravishingly sexy models known as Angie's Angels. She got the idea of starting this very unsuspicious cartel after breaking up with her boyfriend, who was a major drug lord in Mexico at the time. His name was El Monstruo. But I think it's safe to say that Valencia did things almost as good as, if not better, than El Monstruo. And that's because she didn't have to stain her hands with blood or order any killings. All she needed were her girls transporting cocaine from Argentina to England in briefcases and bags. She paid him as high as $5,000 per trip. However, one of the models, named Ariel L, was caught en route with 121 pounds of cocaine in her suitcase at the Aziza International Airport in Argentina. This young, naive smuggler eventually ratted out Valencia, making the International Criminal Police Organization, Interpol, issue a warrant for Valencia's arrest. At first, Valencia went into hiding, but was later found after a few weeks in a local hostel, lodged under a different name. She was imprisoned on May 27, 2010, just two days after her 31st birthday, and was subsequently released on September 27, 2013 after the Argentine government banned her from ever entering their country. She successfully served half of her initial six-year sentence and has since gone under the radar. Number four on the list is Sandra Avila Beltran. Sandra is one of the reasons why you should never judge a book by its cover. Because on the outside, she seems like a very pretty and innocent lady. But on the inside, Sandra Avila Beltran is a legend in the narcotics underworld. Born in Baja, California, Mexico, Sandra was an integral link between El Chapo Sinaloa Cartel in Mexico and the Colombian Norte del Valle Cartel. She was also the mastermind behind the transportation of cocaine through speedboats that went undetected for years in Mexico. With her charming looks, she reportedly dated top-tier drug dealers in her youth, but got married twice to police commanders who were both assassinated in a similar fashion. Many believe she ordered the assassination of her husbands, as she probably used them as pawns in running her narcotics empire. But while we really can't confirm or deny that rumor, Sandra entered the target radar of the police in 2002, after she paid a hefty $5 million ransom for her son, who was kidnapped by rival cartels. This raised suspicions of her source of income, and after four years and a few months of intense investigations, a 30-man police squad finally arrested Sandra in a Mexican uptown restaurant on September 28, 2007. But like I said before, Sandra had good looks, and she wasn't afraid to flaunt it. So before her arrest, she somehow convinced police that she needed to touch up her face with some makeup, just to make sure her mugshot looked pretty. Well, from the looks of it, they allowed her, because that's one very pretty mugshot if you ask me. She was convicted of trafficking billions of dollars worth of drugs smuggled from Colombia to Mexico. And after her extradition to the US and a rearrest in 2013, Sandra was finally released and cleared of all charges in 2015, after five years in prison and an additional two years in isolation. She now lives a pretty simple life in the city of Guadalajara, Mexico. Number three is Melissa Margarita Calderon Ojeda, aka La China, aka Mexico's murder queen. La China was a serial assassin and drug trafficker. She is solely responsible for over 150 murders in Mexico, but her link to violence is tied to her membership in the Sinaloa cartel. 
La China joined the Sinaloa cartel at the age of 21. Seeing how efficient she was in her duties, the Sinaloa cartel created a smaller fraction called the Damaso cartel for La China and her then-boyfriend, Eric Davalos von Borstel, to operate. But after she was forcefully removed as the head of the Damaso cartel and her boyfriend killed by the new boss, El Grande, La China decided to wage a bloody war against the Sinaloa cartel and El Grande. La China and her gang killed every associate of El Grande's, but the biggest mistake she made was failing to stop the war when she had the chance. After the war escalated, and about 133 people were recorded dead, the Mexican police had to step in, linking the origin of the war down to La China. This led to her arrest on September 20th, 2015 at the Cabo San Lucas International Airport, where she attempted to board a flight to Culiacan. Right now, she's currently imprisoned at La Palma, a maximum security prison in Mexico. However, many fear she would attempt to break out just the same way El Chapo broke out of that same prison back in 2001. After all, they were both parts of the Sinaloa cartel. Number 2 is Enedina Arellano Felix de Toledo. This woman was identified by the DEA as the first female drug lord in history. I really can't tell you how the DEA came to that conclusion, but what I can tell you is that this woman was extremely dangerous in her prime. She founded the Tijuana Cartel alongside her brothers and started off as an accountant for the criminal organization. Born in Sinaloa, Mexico, Enedina had a dream to become a Mazatlan Carnival Queen. But being part of the Arellano Felix family meant such dreams would always remain dreams. The entire family ran the cartel, from the oldest to the youngest, and by the mid-1980s, Enedina was working in the family business, but it was never considered by the authorities as a visible head of the Tijuana cartel. Nonetheless, after the fall of the former cartel's financial brain Jesus Labra Aviles, in the year 2000, Enedina began to directly manage the money laundering activities of the criminal organization. And after most of her brothers became incarcerated or deceased, Enedina stepped up as the quintessential female boss of the cartel. And the story doesn't end there. Enedina helped contribute to a more business-like vision instead of the old and violent practices of her brothers, who previously led the Tijuana cartel. She forged alliances with other criminal organizations, as opposed to her brothers who often resorted to violence. But since the United States Department of Treasury sanctioned Enedina under the Foreign Narcotics Kingpin Designation Act, she's been in hiding, making her a fugitive. And now, the female boss standing at the top of our list is Griselda Blanco. Griselda ran one of the world's deadliest cartels and was placed on the same criminal pedestal as Pablo Escobar, El Chapo, and Frank Lucas. But the funny side of the story is, Griselda was a subordinate of Escobar's while he was still the head of the Medellin cartel. Born in Bolivar, Colombia, Griselda was the product of a damaged childhood. And I mean that in a kind way. At just 11 years old, she kidnapped a kid around her neighborhood, attempted to use him for ransom, and eventually killed the kid in cold blood. She became a pickpocket before the age of 13, while her mother's boyfriend forced himself on her on a daily. And after a few years of no parental care and constant abuse, Griselda Blanco ran away from home, joined the Medellin cartel, and ran the fraction of the cartel that was based in Miami, painting the town white and red. White with cocaine and red with the blood of anyone who dared stand in her way. One such person was one of her husbands, whom she killed personally over a silly drug deal dispute. This was the act that earned her the nickname Black Widow. She successfully transported cocaine from Miami to New York and Southern California from the 1970s to the early 2000s. Her cocaine distribution in the US reportedly brought in about $80 million per month. But on February 17, 1985, Blanco was arrested in her home by the DEA and was charged with conspiring to manufacture, import, and distribute cocaine. She served 19 years in prison and was released sometime in 2004. But on September 3rd, 2012, Griselda Blanco was shot in the head and shoulder by a motorcyclist who entered a shop she was buying groceries from. 